Shalom. We're going to pick up another pair of letters today in this series. You can still get a font chart, which might be useful for you if you are wondering how the numbers relate to the letters, how they're used together in Hebrew. The two letters we're doing today are Shin and Bet. So in Hebrew, in Israel, many times there are there are acronyms. So an acronym, something we might pronounce as a word, and it comes as an abbreviation of a series of words. For example, in English, we use the word SCUBA, S-C-U-B-A, but that actually stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. So over time, people began pronouncing SCUBA as a word. Also in Hebrew, the numbers and other abbreviations are not pronounced, so it's hard to know whether you're going to pronounce something or not. So here's our first example. Sometimes you would hear the two letters spoken, Shin, Bet, and they are spoken as letters. Another abbreviation for the same thing is Shabak. And as you can see, the quotation marks are used to show you that this is not a word by itself. Shin bet without these quotation marks could definitely be read as a word, and we'll see what it means shortly. But if we say shin bet, we're using it as an abbreviation for these letters down here, Sherut Habitachon Haklali, which means the general Klali security, Bitachon Sherut service. So this is one of the intelligence agencies of the Israel government. Now sometimes if it's a number you will see the same quotation marks but it might be pronounced as a word. For example we are in the counting of the Omer and the 33rd day of the Omer is a special celebration. You can look at that someplace else. The Lamed is 30, the Gimel is 3, it's the 33rd day but we don't say Lamed Gimel, we actually say Lag, Lag Ba'omer. However, right here, the Shin Bet will be said Shin Bet, but the other abbreviation will not be said Shin Bet Kaf, but it will be, it will be pronounced Shabak. So there are several verb roots sent around this pair of letters. The first of these we're going to look at is Shu, which can mean to return or restore or to do something again. Genesis 3.19 in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Shu. Genesis 26:18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Genesis 42:28, And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, for they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? Psalm 23, 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In Ezekiel 14:6, we see another meaning. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Repent, and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. We're going to look at the repent in a minute. Malachi 4, six, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now the word repent in English breaks down to an idea of changing the direction of your face. Maybe you're looking this way and then you face a different way. In Greek the word is metanoia which means either to face a different direction or also to think differently about something. But in Hebrew the repentance is very specific. It is returning and that is returning to the Torah, re returning to the teachings and instructions of Yehovah as he gave them. If the people are backsliding, they go away from that. If they're shuv, if they're returning, that's where they're going. We'll talk about that more in a minute. So we've already talked about how many times you'll get a 
double consonant at the end of a verb, and so this is a related verb, shovev. It's another kind of turning. It's a turning away. Jeremiah 3.14 Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yehovah, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Zion. Jeremiah 50, verse 6, My people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. There is a cognate word in Arabic, which is shabab, and you may have heard of a Somali militant group. Shabab means, uh, has to do with the youth. This word comes into modern Hebrew kind of meaning naughty, a little bit mischievous, but it's also used as a result of the influence of the Arabic on modern Hebrew that people might say to a group of their friends, come on, shabab, yalla shabab, let's go. And usually it means youth. It doesn't have so much the idea of, of naughty. Another verb root, which I'm sure you know, is yashav, which can mean either to sit or to dwell. Genesis 4:16. And Cain went out from the presence of Jehovah and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Exodus 11.5 And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. So literally to sit somewhere in a chair or to be sitting in a location, to be dwelling somewhere. Another root we find, shin bet he, means captivity. Genesis 14, 14. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them to Dan. Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that Jehovah God might dwell among them. Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon me, because Jehovah hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Ezekiel 6, 9. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whither they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all of their abominations. So whether Israel is taking captives or whether they are the captives, it's the same word. The noun form for captivity is shevi, Exodus 12:29 And it came to pass that at midnight Jehovah smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle Deuteronomy 21:10 When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies and Jehovah thy God hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive following the rules for when that happens. And of course, a word you know, Shabbat. Genesis 2.2. 2. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Leviticus 26.6. 6. And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. In other words, the evil beasts will cease from the land. Joshua 5:12, And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Ruth 4:14, 4, And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be Jehovah, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Now, what ties all these things together? You see the graphs for Shin and Bet in the first line, and Shin Bet Tav, Shabbat, in the second line. I know that most people teach that the Shin 
because it is the picture of T that it means destruction. But I've talked about it elsewhere, and I don't really agree with that. I believe it means change. Um, there are things that change, but they're not necessarily destroyed. So I will put a link for that discussion elsewhere. The bet is the house. So when you change your house, the idea of going back to where you came from, the idea of repentance, the idea of dwelling somewhere, the idea of being in captivity, these are all about changing your house, changing the place you live. And of course the Tav at the end of Shabbat means the sign, and it is almost directly the sign of the cross. So when your house changes to the sign of the cross, then you will have peace, you will have rest, you will have Sabbath. Now there is a noun form that comes from shuv, from return, and that is teshuvah, and it can just mean return, or it also can mean an answer, and it is used this way biblically. 1 Samuel 7, 17, And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar to Jehovah. Job 34, 36, My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. 1 Kings 20, 26, And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. However, as we can see from Google Translate, the word teshuva in modern Hebrew means repentance. We don't actually see a noun, repentance, in the Tanakh. We have this verb, shuv, to return or to repent. But the modern Hebrew word for repentance is teshuva. So we make this nice sentence, teshuva, he ha teshuva. Repentance is the answer. I pray this is helpful to your studies. Until next time, tasimata inayim al hashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.